Guys, Dr. Davalin, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about a really simple topic. It's actually called microdermabrasion. How it differs from dermabrasion and what you can do in these crazy times in this COVID skincare uh, epidemic. Guys, so uh, microdermabrasion is the most common uh, procedure, the most common cosmetic procedure out there. It's more common than Botox, it's more common than fillers, and definitely more common than lasers. So what can you do, what's microdermabrasion? What can you do to replace that now that 80% um, of the world's in lockdown? So microdermabrasion is different from dermabrasion. Dermabrasion is a treatment in the 1970s, 1980s where they use a wire brush. Um, and <laughs> that procedure itself is traumatic. So patients have to go under sedation. Um, we gown out in, in full PPE because there's blood splatter everywhere and we use mostly a wire brush uh, and that's basically like a sander and we're dermabrading skin. That's very different compared to microdermabrasion. So dermabrasion was used to treat things like acne scarring uh, and as well as age-related wrinkles. Uh, it has been used for things like melasma but it's a big disaster with that because it takes away all the pigment. So microdermabrasion is relatively new. We're talking about 20, 30 years old as compared with uh, dermabrasion or wide dermabrasion. Microdermabrasion uses a device and it provides vacuum together with uh, suctioning together with uh, what's known as a, a tip. And the tip is often made out of a hard metal uh, and they often call it diamond tip. So that's a gentle way of polishing skin. Microdermabrasion only takes out probably about 10 microns at the most. So 10 microns is one hundredth of a millimeter and 10, 5 to 10 microns is the uh, level of your stratum corneum. So it takes away the top, the uppermost top layer of skin and gives skin a polish. So that's microdermabrasion. Now, is microdermabrasion, uh, I guess, can we substitute that uh, for home use? And as you guys know, yeah, there's, there's many, many uh, microdermabrasion kits DIY at home. I personally think the skill sets of an aesthetician or a beautician cannot be replaced uh, or, or not only say replaced, cannot be replicated at home unless you've got real talent yourself. Um, because look, the people who are, do it are really, really good at microdermabrasion, you get a very good experience from that. And that's why people keep coming back because it's not only the, uh, I guess, the, the physical method of removing your dead skin cells, it's the whole feel of it and the whole luxury of it. So that can't be replaced with uh, at home uh, preparations. And there is, believe it or not, there is some skill sets involved and there's a good way to do it and there's a right way to do it. Uh, you can put pressure on areas where you want to go a little bit deeper, a little bit harder, and you can be more gentle on areas, for example, around the eyelids, etc. So, you know, that skill set probably can't be replaced um, with, with uh, at home use. But in this day and age, I'll teach you later on how to, I guess, I wouldn't say replace it, but how you can uh, possibly substitute it with chemical exfoliation or at home uh, physical exfoliation. So we talked about uh, how it works. We talked about the indications. So the indications, it is great for th treating things like milia. Milia basically clogged um, uh, skin cells or, or clogged glands. Um, and they occur around your eye area and they're very, very fine. So if we can improve the turnover of the skin, we're gonna improve milia. Other things microdermabrasion can be used for are things like pigmentation. So things like melasma, because what we want to do is we want to decrease the dullness of the skin. We want to encourage turnover. So that instead of skin exfoliating in let's say 28 days, um, microdermabrasion can aid in the process of exfoliation, especially the top layer, and that can brighten skin uh, for the short term. Acne scarring can be treated, but I'll deal in this uh, in another episode. But with acne scarring, you're not dealing with the scars. You're actually decreasing uh, the, the visibility of the scars. So microdermabrasion tricks you because uh, the way I explain it is this, if you've got dull skin, it's much like rust on a uh, car door. And the car door is white, but you've got rust, i.e. Uh, dead skin cells, the dings look worse. So if we polish the car door, if we remove the superficial rust, you still have dings. So the scars are still there, but the optical illusion is there, which makes skin clarity better and hence will um, perceivably reduce the visual aspect of the scars, even though we haven't treated scarring. 
So that's why I guess microdermabrasion can work for scars, but it's not a permanent fix. Uh, other things that can be useful include wrinkles and dull skin. We're talking about very fine wrinkles uh, and, and like I said, dull skin. Uh, but once again, it's temporary. Uh, it's, it's, you know, your skin turns over in 24 to 28 days. And certainly um, if you're using microdermabrasion, it needs to be repeated. There's little hacks which we can talk about later on. So can everyone have microdermabrasion? The answer is no. Uh, it's not great for patients with sensitive skin. So if you have things like rosacea, dermatitis, eczema, uh, and just general skin, skin sensitivities, you probably want to stay clear from microdermabrasion because no matter how gentle it is, chances are it's going to flare up your rosacea. So for rosacea patients, possibly the use of something like uh, hydrofacial with infusion with hyaluronic acid, but you skip away the, uh, the skin acids, that might be in your best interest. But once again, it's on a case-to-case -case basis. If you do get sensitive skin and you do flare up with microdermabrasion, certainly give that a miss. Um, and, and this is where lasers and uh, other energy devices can be useful in the context of patients with sensitive skin looking for some rejuvenation. So there are a few uh, hacks, I guess, with uh, microdermabrasion. It's when you actually have a treatment, your skin is more permeable because you decrease the stratum condinium, you increase permeability to the epidermis and down into the dermis through the basement membrane. So microdermabrasion takes the top surface of your stratum condinium off. So it's very important to, I guess, avoid skincare actives. So by actives, I mean things like vitamin A especially, so your retinol, your retinoids, uh, your ascorbic acid, because they can be irritating, good formulations are you know, around uh, pH 3, 3.5, even lower. Uh, so that, that can be irritating as well. And then alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. The flip side, however, is that if you know what you're doing, you can use your microdermabrasion as a primer. So basically you're increasing the absorption of your actives, but you've got to be very cautious with that. My suggestion is that if you, you know, when COVID's over, when, when you are uh, trying microdermabrasion, your aesthetician and beautician will tell you, let's avoid things for four, five, six, seven days. More than likely they'll ask you to use benign products. Yeah, things like hyaluronic acid and, and moisturizers and calming agents and things like that. But if you're cautious at day three, day four, you can start with one active, something like a retinol or a retinoid. And if you can tolerate that, you can certainly add the Bs, add the Cs, and then the other actives that you're using, including your antioxidants, the CE ferulic acid, uh, and even the, like we mentioned, the skin acids. So it's not a uh, steadfast rule that you should avoid everything. It can increase the penetration of skincare actives if you know what you're doing. So now I guess the main, the main thing with this talk is that in this situation, this crazy, crazy world of COVID where well, I call it COVID skincare, yeah? So it's a new, I guess, hashtag. Um, what can we do? So most of us are socially isolated. Most of us can't go to the beauticians or the aestheticians or the dermatologists. What can you do at home to feel good? Okay, let's talk about microdermabrasion kits that you can buy at home use. So they range from about $100 all the way up to two, $300 for the good ones. Doesn't mean that you've got a kit or at home device, you know how to use it. But by all means, um, that's one avenue. You can actually experiment with that. You can, like I said, go easy. You're not gonna harm your skin unlike, unlike for example, microneedling or, or microneedling device or a skin roll or a skin needling device. Microdermabrasion, chances are you're not gonna actually damage your skin. What I'm proposing is probably a, uh, and, and I'll share this with you from a logic point of view. When you have microdermabrasion, basically you're doing a mechanical exfoliation of skin. In other words, you're removing the top layer of your skin. That can be replicated, believe it or not, with a buff buff pad or a, uh, a loofah pad. Uh, it can even be sand, for example, you know, fine sand. Obviously, if you've got rosacea, you're not going to do that yet. But all of these are physical exfoliators. A physical exfoliator only addresses the uh, top layer of the skin. It does not have any biochemical activity. Uh, does not have any biological activity. So what I propose is that instead of using, for example, a microdermabrasion kit or a microdermabrasion home use, you might want to consider something uh, which stimulates your own immune system from a chemical point of view um, 
to aid in your collagen. Um, and what I'm proposing is that, and dermatologists do this all the time, yeah, for, for we call it skin priming, but there's also, you know, we use to treat, for example, sunspot, solar keratosis, precancerous cells um, with, uh, with this method. And basically it's, it's exfoliation of your skin. In fact, dermatologists even use fine grit sandpaper. I'm not asking you guys to use it, but certainly for patients of mine, who have uh, significant sun damage uh, in precancerous uh, cells where the skin is really thick, especially the uh, stratum corneum, I need to get down to the, to the base. In other words, I need penetration of the uh, amino levinic acid or the anti-cancer creams and topicals. And I often use uh, fine grit sandpaper. Uh, and I, it's not just me, many dermatologists, when we are uh, trying to increase the potency of a chemical peel, for example, even a trichloroacetic acid peel, guys don't do that, but I'm just giving an example, yeah? So uh, we use fine grit sandpaper, sterilized sandpaper, it's often gamma ray sterilized sandpaper. Uh, we abrade the skin uh, and then we put the chemical on top of that. So what I'm proposing from a sensible point of view at home, if you've got your Clarisonic or an equivalent, you can use that as a substitute for mechanical uh, dermabrasion or mechanical microdermabrasion. So something simple like a Clarisonic or equivalent, use that with a very benign uh, face wash. Give yourself a good scrub. That helps decrease the amount of dead cells. And then from there, you can actually use something like um, a retinoid, right? So I personally like using uh, between two to three, even up to four to five percent retinoic acid. Uh, not a good idea for at-home use, but. In the States, you can get hold of adapalene, which is uh, different. So what you could do is give yourself a good scrub with the Clarisonic. That's, remember guys, for patients with sensitive skin, don't do this yet. We're talking about normal skin types. Give yourself a good scrub with the Clarisonic. You can layer on your adapalene. Uh, if you're more advanced than that and you want, really want uh, mechanical together with chemical exfoliation, you can prime your skin with something like an alpha hydroxy acid. Um, AHAs, for example, like uh, the Inkey List, uh, the Ordinary, they all make really good, I guess, budget uh, alpha hydroxy acids. Better formulations, the ones I like, are usually from uh, Neostrata. They make unbelievable AHA. So something like an AHA 15, uh, and you can use that maybe three, four nights in a row uh, prior to, as a priming agent. Uh, you can gently exfoliate using a Clarisonic and then you can put on your uh, medical grade uh, retinoid, or if you don't have access to a retinoid, your retinol. Uh, and then don't touch, don't, don't, don't go for any skincare actives after that, because your skin may be irritated. So let the chemicals work, because by doing that, you're doing a couple of things. First of all, alpha hydroxy acids. I mean, yes, I know the research shows that higher concentrations can uh, stimulate collagen, uh, and a lot of people say it, it, it can, but the cases which I've seen are clinical cases, not usually with uh, skincare. So, but once again, we're using this as a priming agent, right? Uh, the retinoids also help with uh, decreased oil production. It can reduce your blackheads. It can reduce uh, sun damage. It can compact your epidermis. It can thicken your um, epidermis, sorry compact your stratum corneum, which is at the top part of your skin, and increase dermal thickness by stimulating collagen. So unlike microdermabrasion, uh, where you're using a, a, a physical method to enhance skin quality due to the optical benefits of light transmission, in other words, removing dead skin cells, if you're using chemical exfoliation, uh, that's a plus, right? Because you are actually looking at uh, biologically stimulating your uh, collagen and improving your skin that way. Uh, for you guys who don't follow uh, Michelle Wong, who, who goes under the name of um, Lab Muffin Skincare, she has an exfoliation guide. She's a very, very smart girl. Uh, she approaches skin very scientifically. Uh, and I think the exfoliation guide is, is, um, is free. So I'll link it down below. Um, it's free. Yeah, uh, and like I said, she uses it in a very appropriate manner. So, you know, thumbs up to her in regards to that. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It is um, a long-winded video of saying uh, <laughs> what I think is, is probably better for your skin compared to uh, a home micro uh, dermabrasion device uh, that's better for the long term.
Uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed, by all means subscribe, uh, share, like, comment, and do all the good things that make this channel grow. I'll see you shortly, uh, possibly another video by the end of this week. Uh, and once again, thank you for your attention. Bye for now.